Hey guys, Jungle Jerry back with you. Sorry I haven't been uploading a lot here lately. Uh, the COVID hit the house once again. We had it, gosh, about 14 months ago and then we got it again, uh, February going into March. Still dealing with a little post-COVID pneumonia myself right now, so if I sound funny, that's why. But I did want to let you know, I got the palms unboxed. Um, they look pretty doggone good. Now on the Washingtonia over there, I actually trimmed off some of the dead stuff. And in all of my palms, I put some hydrogen peroxide down in the crown in order to alleviate any, uh, any mildew and, and nastiness that might be down in the crowns. That's always good for it when you pull them out of the boxes and they've been kind of moist and dark. So got that taken care of. But what I really wanted to talk to you about today was something that's very near and dear to my heart right now. Um, and I think this could help you and your family out going forward. If you've been living under a rock, you don't know, but the economy right now is in really bad shape. Uh, everything is up price-wise, uh, and gas especially, and then you got war going on over in the Ukraine, which is actually Europe's breadbasket. I've heard estimates that Euro, uh, Ukraine accounts for maybe, between Ukraine and Russia, uh, a third of the global wheat supply. Supply? Supply. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon me in order to help my family out to put in a regular vegetable garden like I used to do back in the Reaganite 71 days. If you go back to the videos uh, section on my channel, you can go back and you can see a ton of videos where I'm making food. So it's something I know how to do. I just haven't had to do it. But I think we might be getting to a point in society where it's going to be important for everybody to know how to grow their own food. Because uh, right now, at least, you can get seeds pretty cheaply. And if you haven't already and you've got room on your land, you need to start a garden. Because if you think about it, the dollar value, consider this for just a minute. In the last two years during the pandemic, 80% of all the dollars ever printed were printed. Well over a hundred and something years, up, no more than a trillion dollar money supply. Back around the housing crisis in 08, they bumped it up to $4 trillion. We're over $20 trillion in dollar supply right now. So they're basically printing their way out of the debt that they've created and piling on more. And they're devaluing our dollar. And it's like, it's like one of the most vicious taxes you can do on people because it, it affects the poorest the worst. And so if you know how to grow your own food, not only can you feed your family, and help other people in your community and maybe even sell it if times got really bad and that's probably the biggest thing because food that you can grow is actually a commodity and it might become more valuable than the dollars in your pocket at some point in the future so this season i'm going to actually be doing that let me show you what i've done to kind of prepare and uh, i'll take you along so come on so a couple of days ago i went ahead and filled in this area here i'm going to have to bury my uh my drip irrigation pipe and some of my electrical stuff, but I put a gate in on the back. <laughs> I gotta work that down a little bit too. But I've made an area behind the tropical garden where I'm gonna put the vegetable garden. And so I'll be able to come out the gate and I'll have a center clearing. And this area right here, all of this area goes over to the pool house there. But I actually made this gate right here wide enough that I can get my mower in with the dump cart. It's going to make doing that a whole lot easier. Uh, it took a couple of hours uh, to put this thing together. But now I can just bend this fence back. And I can get right in with mulch, with uh, compost, whatever, drive it right in. And I'm going to have about 10 beds. I bought some of the... Uh, got them off of Amazon. I'm going to put a picture up here so you can see what they look like. I could have built wooden beds, but the expense and the time uh, would have really weighed down on me with everything I've got to do. So what I did is I found a, uh, it's a set, they sell them as a set, three foot by six foot, and they look like the stock tanks, uh, but they have uh, open bottoms, so they're raised beds. Uh, I'm going to put about 10 out here, uh, running two rows of them all the way down. And the other thing that I'm going to do, because I'm doing this in a hurry, in order to prep this grassy area and kill everything off, I'm going to lay cardboard down. Cardboard's going to do a couple of things. It's going to kill the grass, but it's also going to bring in the worms because they love that stuff, and eventually it'll break down. So that's my plan for this area. One of the reasons I put up all of this fencing is we have some neighborhood dogs that have been digging up my yard. 
they even started digging underneath my pool house i had to dig that uh or throw some dirt back underneath there but uh really really annoying now this section here by the pool house is going to get the most shade so my uh my cooler and more shade loving uh vegetables i'm going to probably put over here i'm actually thinking and i don't know but i got a really shady area here with this japanese maple i may make this little section right here a little compost bin area where i can uh, have quick access to compost and when we bring stuff you know table scraps things like that throw it in the grass and the leaves and all that and compost it right here on the spot so i don't have as far to travel with it right now the compost is way over there behind my uh, shop over there i've got it uh, but i've got quite a bit uh, from the last uh, season and a half or so but i'm going to be able to do quite a bit of food right here and keep the dogs away hopefully i know you want to see it let's take a quick peek in the old uh, greenhouse here and uh, i'll show you the tropicals right now pardon this i know it looks like the cole haynes but uh we're getting ready to do some uh, serious spring gardening business here <laughs> my chest <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is not going to be a detailed uh what is everything growing here i've got those videos if you go back through my videos you'll see but uh Everything is still kicking and alive. These are my remaining Jabea chilensis, uh, Chilean wine palms there. Going to get those in the ground. And I want you to notice, I've got plumerias that never stop blooming in the greenhouse. And some of them have gotten absolutely huge. Sorry guys. I mean, they're full-blown trees and i got to figure out how to get them out of here now. <laughs> Would you look at it? Just look at it. The end of last season, you'll remember a lot of these Hawaiian tea plants were very brown. This is uh, what they did look like. If you get them enough shade, but soft lighting, they'll get really pink for you. Got my crotons over there. My bougainvillea is kind of on life support. Uh, we had a cold snap come through and it just wasn't quite warm enough in here, but she should bounce back just fine. Yeah, buddy. Look at the look at the stem on that thing. <laughs> About two and a half years old now. And one of these days, hopefully my uh, Heliconia rostrata will actually put off some uh, lobster claws. That'd be nice. My uh, transplanted goldfish plant has taken off like crazy. Get the grass out of there. And here's my uh, my first one. I started off with a couple of sprigs on that one, and uh, she's gone nuts too. So there we go. Look at the greenhouse, and I'm going to take you inside now and show you where I'm going to be doing my seed starting and my seed packets. On the way in, though, here is my. Uh, windmill palm farm what's left of it didn't go crazy with the protection this year um, just Christmas lights and I put down some weed block down there uh, to keep grass from growing up in the pots this time it's worked a whole lot better and the baby Washingtonia that I had I just used a palm protection barrel on it you can see the fronds that actually touch the outside of the barrel you know they kind of they're not doing too good but everything else pretty much is so I think she'll bounce back and be just fine there. And this is just a look at some of the stuff that I'm going to be seeding. Um, some of this stuff I'm going to direct sow, like probably the sugar snap peas. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll start them. But uh, uh, a lot of this stuff I'm going to actually set the seeds inside. Um, I've got some trays set up for them. I've got me some ruckers. And when you buy seeds, make sure you're buying heirloom seeds because if you do that, you can actually save the seeds at the end of the season, dry them out, keep them in a cool, dark place, replant them, and you'll have brand new plants. If you buy hybrids, you're not going to have that opportunity because they, it's kind of like a designed obsolescence. You get one season out of them and you're done. The kind of plants that you'd buy at the big box stores, uh, those vegetable plants tend to be hybrids. So. Be sure and watch for her heirlooms, that way you can save the seeds and save yourself a lot of money. 
uh, cherry tomatoes, Rutgers, I've got some beef steak, uh, jalapenos, bell peppers, all the stuff that we can make our salsa with, uh, but also uh, everything else, uh, carrots, cucumbers, celery, you name it. Uh, we're going to try to grow quite a bit of stuff this season. <laughs> and here's our foyer. Um, this used to be one of those little bitty uh, majesty palms that you can buy in the big box store here, but uh, look at it. <laughs> uh, I need some more lights up here, but uh, we've, we've got a lot of our tropicals in here. The Monstera, all that stuff is in here. But over here, a grow tent that I made out of mylar and metal shelving. I've got my seed trays. Now, I've taken some of these 1020 trays that I was uh, making palm trees in, and I've got some of this Sunshine 4 mix, which is a high porosity mix. Um, very good stuff. Uh, lots of perlite and peat and just uh, really good stuff for seed starting. I'm going to be starting my seeds in this. I've already got the lighting set up. I've got heat pads underneath it, so we should be able to get this stuff to go really, really quickly and well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my seeds. I'm going to put two in each, each deal just to be safe. I'll put two seeds in, moisten it up, get the uh, material nice and wet, and then put a saran wrap piece over all of them. That way it'll hold that moisture in and we'll get them germinated. Most things you're looking at seven to ten days to germinate. Some things are faster, but oh, hello Regal Shield. How you doing there? But yeah, we'll get them germinated and they'll have plenty of light and each one of these is going to have its own heat pad and we'll get her going. Good Lord, look at that. Look at that burrow's tail. It's been dropping stuff off and creating new ones. We've been putting them in pots there. Well, guys, there's the little update of what we've got going on and what we're going to be growing. Uh, here in about a week or so, I got to get all of these plants that are in the house. I got to get them outside and get them ready. We'll still be doing a tropical garden, but the main priority this spring is getting that vegetable garden in the ground and making sure we have some food security here for us, our family, our extended family, even our neighbors. And then if we have any excess, we can turn around and sell it at a farmer's market, can it, freeze it, do all of that stuff. I do have, uh, I've still got a couple of car videos. I've been so dead gum sick, I haven't even wanted to edit or do anything. I've mainly been watching the news uh, of what's going on, you know, and that's really gotten me into this. I've got a few car videos still to edit, uh, some upgrades that I did to Kiwi Kate's car. Um, I put some really cool L wiring in that, uh, well, you'll see what it looks like, but it's very cool um, that you might want to do on your vehicle one of these days and, and a few other things. But I'm going to get those uploaded as well. But right now I want to get this one up because if you have the opportunity, like I said, it makes sense uh, to give yourself a little insurance policy when it comes to food and nutrients and calories. We're going to have it a lot better in America than, than a lot of other places, but I think it's going to hit everybody. And, and if the dollar goes off from being the reserve currency, you know, which, uh, you know, everybody buys their oil with, we're in big trouble. And we better have a backup plan. And this is cheap insurance. Uh, for a handful of dollars, you can buy seeds and you can be growing your own food and be at least assured that you're going to have a certain amount of calories in your diet and be able to put it back and, and, and can it and freeze it, like I said. But uh, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. I'm thinking in a couple of days, probably uh, three or four days, I'll get those beds in and so I'll do a video on, on getting all of that set up and then I gotta fill them and I gotta do all that stuff. So got a lot to do. At any rate, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. Um, I'll put links down below to the raised beds. You can take a look at them, see what you think, uh, and even some of these seeds here. Uh, if you want to go ahead and buy them and have them shipped straight to you, you can do that, uh, courtesy of uh, the Amazon fairies. So we'll see you in the next video. Kool-Aid Maluna.